Communication Company. And let's see what it looks like inside that. Reception, as you see, of course. Um, the logo jump, as you see, we, we took the idea of jumping forward, jumping upwards with using the dot of the J that jumps out. Uh. The original logo, when we designed it, didn't have the circle, but every logo that we designed has to pass from showing this greeting. So, we were told to put a circle around it, and our wisdom would be okay. So now, but I would say uh, it, it, I, I like it more with the circle. It's not only a feng shui thing. I think it's 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 better with it. It's more compact. It's round. It's really round. So and we have a, a surface that is always defined. It doesn't float. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, Yuba. Okay, okay, okay. So this is our uh, first floor. We have a total of three floors here in the unit. Um, this is actually uh, both a hospitality area for clients, for film houses, production houses when they come here. But it is also our living room and our bar and our party room and everything for our, uh, our staff. Uh, for me, it is very important that the staff feel at home over here. Uh, as you may understand, an, an advertising agency, we don't work for just eight hours. Uh, every, every day is longer than that. And sometimes, okay, sometimes people come very late, but sometimes at night they stay very long. Uh, sometimes we don't sleep. <laughs> and uh, so, so we want to make sure that our office is also our home. If you look in the in the restrooms, people have okay. You can't see it from here, but uh, people have their toothbrush there. We have a shower uh, here. Uh, people use their music instruments. We have a counter bar here. Sometimes on Fridays, uh, we 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 open the whiskey and order some food in and have uh, very casual parties for the staff. So for me, uh, this atmosphere is very important. As you walk in, you should feel that. Yeah. So it's not just a lobby and then you have uh, partitions where people are working on computers. Yeah. So this entire floor is actually dedicated to that. Yeah. And of course we have uh, two meeting rooms, a big uh, conference room that seats about mm, 15 people or so. Uh, that we use for big uh, client meetings and also uh, many times film production houses come here. They have a big team, we have a big team so we need that, that many seats in one room and a big whiteboard for brainstorming. And uh, here on the other side we have a small meeting room. That's about eight to ten people. We use it for, for internal. Yeah, yeah, we use this for internal meetings or uh, if ever the, the other one is employed and uh, we need a, a breakout room. Uh, background for this is actually why do we have two meeting rooms? Okay, it, it does make sense uh, to have two meeting rooms because sometimes there are two different teams using the rooms. John, we used to have these two units here in this RCA complex. And our, our door was right here. And this is our old reception counter. It used to be positioned like this. And if you look closely, the, the reception counter is built like a, a springboard, my <laughs> right? 
see, there's a, you go up here, you go here, and then you jump. <laughs> so all this was like that, and it was basically an invitation. You come through the door, and you can jump into our world. Yeah. So we use this as a, as a symbolic of, of uh, how we feel coming to the office. Yeah. So then we, we expanded, and we were able to have the other unit over there. So we broke through the wall and we added the other meeting room over here. And again it was Feng Shui that told us to make our door on this side and not here. So we had to close that door and we opened another door over here. Yeah. So this is the background of our uh, first floor. Yeah. Okay, then we go upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, good have you? Yeah. So now we are going to up to the second floor of the jump communication. Yes, I'm hot. Okay. So here we're in the second floor out of three floors. Uh, people come here in the morning and before they think about work, they think about coffee. coffee. <laughs> exactly. So again, uh, the first thing you see is our sofas, uh, our living area. The second thing you see is food and drinks. Yeah. So this is our our sort of our kitchen where we have microwave and food and all dishes and all that kind of stuff. And here we have a, a breakfast room. Basically, anything related to drinks and drinking. We have uh, refrigerators, uh, water, tea, uh, uh, and everything. And a lot of people come here and bring their breakfast and, and eat it here, okay, and also for for lunch. And uh, on the other side, we also have a dining room. This is our dining room, which is also being used by staff that like to eat in house. About half of us like to eat outside. And half of us uh, bring our lunch and eat it here. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I am here in Jump Communication, and today we are pleased to interview Mr. Alex, the CEO of Jump Communication. Before we start, can you please tell us about yourself a little bit? Um, I'm originally from Germany. Um, I've lived in Thailand for over 21 years. I was in Hong Kong before then for one year, uh, but uh, the first half of my life I, I lived in Germany, one year in the United States, and I graduated from university in, in uh, Germany, and then made my way to Asia. Yes. Um, so why do you start Jump Company as a communication company, or what are you doing in, in Jump? Uh -huh. uh, when I came to Thailand, out of Hong Kong, I was working for the, the same company and advertising agency that I worked for in Hong Kong, and they asked me to come to Thailand. And I was there for a couple of years, I went to another company, and then it was the time that, that I and some of our friends felt uh, we want to open something ourselves. We, we felt we had learned a lot from uh, other uh, agencies and other people, and we were ready to do something on our own. And uh, so we jumped out of the old office and we, we jumped into a new lifestyle, which was our own advertising agency. And uh, that was 11 years ago. Yeah. So this one is your own company or company? We have 11 shareholders and many of them are our employees as well. Yeah. So how uh, Germany and Thailand is very far from each other. So mm -hmm. why would you choose Thailand as your location base to start your company? Um, like I said, I was in Hong Kong. Hong Kong was my first stop in Asia, and that was a deliberate choice. I, uh, I had lived in the United States for one year, and then I became interested in Asia. Uh, but I felt Hong Kong was a safe, a safe place to go first because of English as a language. Hong Kong and Singapore, uh, you can get by with English quite well, quite easily. Whereas, um, okay, the, it has changed in Thailand a bit more, but uh, 20 years ago, uh, well, still, many people don't speak a lot of English. and uh, Or maybe they learned English back in school, but they haven't used it for 20 years, so 
Same if you go to Germany, you know, people haven't spoken English for 20 years, like, ah, ah don't speak to me. Right? Uh, like here, and a lot of my creative people, they would prefer not to speak English, and so it helps them that I speak Thai. But it was my company that asked me to come to Thailand. Uh, I was in Hong Kong for one year, and actually I wasn't ready to move away. I felt, ah, okay, uh, I'm just getting experienced. And then he asked me to come to Thailand, and I, so I, okay, it was a why not decision, but I was not 100% convinced, but I still did it. Uh, but when I was here um, in, in Thailand working with uh, Thai colleagues, after one week I knew, okay, this is it, I never want to go back to Hong Kong. <laughs> And uh, this is where I feel I feel good. And this feeling has not changed in 20 years. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. Uh, so how do you develop your talent to suitable with your talent? Um, a lot of a lot of people that end up in advertising uh, have a background that is founded in 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 passion of creating something. Uh, that could be creating ideas, creating copy, creating text, scripts, or or on the visual side, and uh, I, I have a visual background. I come from the, the art side. Uh, I used to be an art director in Germany, and then I came to, to Hong Kong. And uh, as a an, as an, uh, visual person, or as a creative person in general, your, your drive is to, to visualize something, to bring something to life that you have in your mind, so other people can see and judge it. And uh, this is a starting point. But this is what have to, you have to preserve to, to keep you going and keep, keep driving forward. Yeah. So it's about like, using imagination and putting it in your work? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's not because somebody tells you to, but if you get a brief, you have an idea or inspiration or you have a vision of some sort, and uh, uh, you yourself want to see it on screen or on paper because you already saw it in, in your head. Like a film director, he, he has to see the film in his head before he draws a storyboard, before he starts developing and shooting it. But if he doesn't see the, head, uh, the, the film in his head, uh, he cannot create it. So it's, it's bringing that vision that you have in your mind uh, to life for others to see. It seems like not easy to be at this point, but I want to know like, how is your first commercial look like? Is it still on screen or media as now today? Uh, you mean my first commercial first TV commercial first, yeah. or first job? First, first time. Okay, two. Let's so make first. two. Okay. okay, my first job, I was still a student okay. uh, in Germany. I was like 17 or so, and it was a logo design for a hair salon, a beauty salon. And I did them. I did a lot of options and stuff, and there were no computers back then. Uh, okay, that was the first generation of home computers, but no graphic computers, no Macs, nothing. And so everything was handmade, and I sold some designs, and then they wanted me to do it on their window, uh, shop front, very much like this one. And um, so I had to do it, you know, with airbrush and, and masking tape and everything very handmade, yeah. Today when you would do it on, as an inkjet, the computer would do a die cut and you just stick it on five minutes it's finished and it took me like a, a weekend uh, but it was an experience and it was my first money uh, that I made from uh, doing designs and my first commercial commercial then was uh, in Hong Kong and my first my first uh, film project in Hong Kong was actually my biggest film project in my entire career uh, it was for uh, FedEx couriers FedEx, like uh, DHL, uh, uh, Courier, and it was a, a regional campaign that, that was uh, running in several countries across Asia. And uh, we, we filmed that commercial in Hollywood for a, a production budget of, I think, 1.2 million US dollars. At the time, it was like half the plan, it was like 50 million, just to shoot the film. Today, as a client, you would be happy if you have 50 million for media money to put your film on, on air or, or online. And back then, it was a, a given number to, okay, for a regional commercial, you would have a budget of 1 million US dollars. For, so it was, it was, yeah, yeah. I, 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 for me, it wasn't the money experience, but, but to have 
to have that budget behind an idea that you create, and then it runs, ends up running in all over Asia, and also the experience of shooting in, in Hollywood. It was, you know, uh, these days don't come back anymore. <laughs> so I think everybody wants to know this, the answer of this question. So what makes Jump different from other company, and why do customers have to choose your company? Yeah. Um, the advertising agency landscape uh, in any country where you go is usually shaped by a group of 10 to 15 network agencies. They're uh, international networks that you, that you find the same names in, in every capital in the world. And uh, we, we do not want to compete in terms of size with them. What we do compete with them is in terms of quality because most of us have been working for these agencies before. So we take our experience from these big agencies and when we found a jump, we, we only took the best things. But uh, there are a lot of um, downsides to a big agency, also for, uh, for clients. And uh, with Jump, we have a, a, a smaller, tighter, much quicker agency model. So in a way, we can offer clients uh, the experience and the work quality that they would find in a big agency. However, with the, the closeness to attention, with the, 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 we are very close with our, our clients. The management is involved in all aspects of the work. Uh, we have very little hierarchies. We don't have these, you know, 15 layers of, you know, on top is a president from Japan who, who you know, you, you never see, and after two years he goes home, and uh, we don't have that. Uh, we're very closely knit. Within Jump, we're more like a family than a company. And it is, this is a benefit for our customers, uh, our clients. Uh, of course, there are, there are smaller agencies than we, than we are. But uh, being a medium-sized agency has, has exactly these, these benefits. Uh, with our experience, we can deliver the, the expertise of a large agency, but we're much more efficient than a small agency. Uh, so uh, actually, the, the, the medium segment is, is, uh, is very beneficial for customers. And I must say, there, there aren't that many medium-sized agencies with that background. A lot of the, the big networks, they always exist. If they make money or not, they, they get subsidized. But you find a lot of good work in medium-sized agencies because they have to survive on their own. They don't have a Unilever account that they are given for free. You know what I mean? Uh, the big agencies, they have network clients. That means somewhere in New York, um, this, the com this worldwide company and this worldwide ad advertising agencies, they say, okay, we're doing work together worldwide. Now here, the local team of the clients, they are forced to work with this local agency if they want or not. And it could be that they end up with a team that is useless. Because even in a, in a big agency with 300 staff, as a client, you only get a team of eight people, four account servers, four creative people. So we don't give them less. We don't give them just one. We, we give them ten or tw ten or twelve. Uh, just the same. We have uh, senior management involvement. Uh, so uh, there's probably the benefit. Uh, we have to we have to work harder because we're a medium-sized agency. Yeah. So you basically do the company as the family base. And are there any specific cultures of junk company and your different departments? As I see, there are three, four. And do they perceive different cultures in different departments? Um, no, I wouldn't say different. Uh, we, 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 it's hard to define. We, we, we usually call it uh, DNA, our DNA. Uh, it's, it's the same, it's the same in every form. Uh, yes, we, we want to be very family-based. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we have a, a family feel here uh, because we're very close with one another. And like I said before, we don't have uh, a lot of hierarchies. Uh, myself, I I try and speak at, at eye level with everyone. I'm not I'm not being the boss, right? Um, but I want to to help out and uh, promote their skills and, and all these things. So um, we we a lot of it is based on self discipline. I must say, if if I see uh, my staff is not 
not getting their act together, it's not, things are not working, okay, I have to be assertive and uh, do this and do this. But if I see they're self-disciplined and they know what it takes to, to, to get the job done, then uh, I can be very easy with them. And this is probably what helps because they're very professional. Also, we have known each other for such a long time. A lot of my staff have been with me at, at our own company, at, at, at my, our old company, the a network uh, agency. So our work style is very familiar to us. And we have our own, own way of doing things. The, the creative people are very, uh, the, the creative directors in particular, that I've been with for 15 years, they're very experienced. So in a way, when the, the client briefs, we, we know it already. So it, it doesn't have to go through this usual process uh, the account service has to pick up the brief, they have to write the brief, then do research. It's like we, we listen and we get it, and, and we can get to terms. And um, it's the, the left hand knows what the right hand is doing and the other way around, yeah. Which is difficult to find in a, in a big agency, in a big network agency. Uh, back to yourself. Yeah. Are there any specific or some important thing that you're working on right now? Maybe your activities or um, criteria? There are always, way back noon, there's always 108 things happening at the same time. There's, not, there's never just one thing, uh, which makes life in an advertising agency exciting but also very stressful. As, as the, the person running this agency, to me, being, being at the helm of it is not a privilege, it's a responsibility that, that is on my shoulders. Yeah. So uh, I, I never allow myself to take it easy. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, okay, I have the internal uh, task that I have to look out for is, is, is staff, is that uh, the presentations get, get done well, and that we have a, a financial responsibility to, to, well, at the end of each month we have to have our salary uh, come, come in the company in order to pay for all of us. Um, if we are uh, able to sustain our our own livelihood, then I'm happy. Uh, we're not we're not okay. It's difficult in, in advertising to become rich. There's no such thing anymore. There's no such thing. If we if we all survive, it's great. If we can create an environment that we all have our income and are happy, then this is perfect. This is this is what we strive to strive for. Uh, on the outside, we have always a lot of projects going on and you have to treat every project as if it is the most important project at least when you're meeting with the client uh, they don't want to hear well sorry we were so busy with this other project for another client no client wants to hear that so you have to come in a presentation and they have to feel that their project is the most important project out of all the projects on your screen and this is a big task but you you have to manage from day to day yeah uh, in your point of view, do you think, um, sorry, yeah. in your point of view, how is business ethics related to commercial social responsibility? As media is some sort of influencer in our social mostly. Uh, 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 uh. Um, to me, the two topics are, I see them a bit different. To me, business ethics is is the, the integrity, the sincerity that you don't cheat, that you don't lie, that you don't uh, do um, unethical things. And that relates to um, your staff, your, your clients, and also to the other people in the industry, I would say, other agencies. So our staff, we want to make sure we treat them well, we want to make sure they, 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 they are happy when they come to work and with the things that we're doing. For our clients, we want to make them happy through our work, but also our service, and seeing them. And the industry, I would say, ethics. Um, many times, agencies are are forced to pitch for a project. And that means you have three agencies fighting it out, who has the best idea. So even though there is this competitive environment, uh, we are never we are never anti another agency. 
where we, we don't want to have enemies. Ah, oh, they they are they're bad. Blah, blah, blah. It's 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 like a sport competition. You know, today you run and the race is finished, and then because we all have many friends in other agencies, so uh, it's it's not it's not an issue of competition. It's it's that it's that one that one race. Okay, and then it's it's finished. So so I I want to promote that we all see ourselves as one industry because we have a lot of common problems. And uh, uh, for example, yeah, the, the, it's much more difficult than it used to be just to make money. Yeah. So other agencies are facing that too. And so this is why uh, agencies should not be um, opposing one another. They, they, we all can help each other. Yeah. And uh, coming to the other side, the CSR, the corporate social responsibility, that to me is outside of these three groups, the staff, the, the, the clients, and the, the industry. Is basically the, the the society as a whole. So the corporate social responsibility usually okay. I would I would see it more with okay if you have a, a production a factory, uh, it goes to what type of machinery you do if you do environmentally conscious uh, procedures if you have, if you have water running in the uh, in the in the rivers that kind of thing or if you're polluting the air, also how you you you, you treat your staff. But uh, also from an a a agency, it can be the point. Okay, we can we can assist in uh, in projects through our creative work. Yeah, and that that usually needs to go hand in hand with um, a client of ours. Sometimes if clients may have their own CSR activity, uh, we, we it's possible to do something together. So how do you see yourself and your company in the next five years? Basic, no, it's it's not tough. No, it's tough. I have a very clear vision, and the, the vision is I do not want to become a bigger agency than this. This is, is uh, to me, this is very clear. Uh, we're currently around 35 staff, and like I said before, for, for our clients, we offer the benefit of a medium sized agency over a large agency. There are a lot of benefits, and I see the same. As a as a person running an agency and, and, and creating it together with my colleagues, uh, I once read that in a company where there are more than forty employees, this is the line where it starts. That some people do not know everybody in the company. Yeah. If yeah. you're say in a classroom and there are thirty students, you usually you know everybody. But if you're in a in a lecture room where they're like two classes together and it's like 60 people. Even, even if you're there every day, it's impossible to know everybody, 60. So this is when that, when that family mean, uh, feeling gets lost. And I want to preserve that. So I'm not striving to become bigger and bigger and larger. I want to preserve what we have. So I think that the key word for me would be um, preservation and uh, sustainability and continuity of the thing, the way we're doing it. So basically, if in five years uh, we're we're doing exactly the things that we're doing great right today, and we can sustain ourselves from it, then perfect. Then that would be my vision. We don't want to lose business and become smaller, but also we don't want to become bigger. Um, I think the, the most important thing or that what I tell myself every day is to to never stop learning to me this is the most important thing there's never there's never a way a, a way that you can tell yourself this is all I need to know you always need to know more you have to accept that fact you will never know everything but you have to accept the, the opportunity that every day you can learn something new. So if I didn't have that attitude, today I wouldn't be able to speak time. I, I taught it myself. I never went to class. But I told myself I want to learn it. And there's never that day where I say, I'm good enough. I can order my food. And that's all I need. So uh, it is this 
uh, this constant development, this constant uh, going forward. And it doesn't stop with things like that. For me, it's also uh, very practical, is learning new software. I'm, I'm always interested in learning new software. Even, even when, it, when I don't need it, I, I learn it because I'm curious. I want to find out what this can do. And it goes back to, I have a vision, and I, how can I bring it forward? And sometimes Photoshop is not enough. You have to do 3D stuff. Sometimes still pictures is not enough. You have to do editing and visual effects and, and uh, uh, film and uh, what else not. Or if you only did layouts, you still need to do and do a website. You know, there's, there's, there should never be this moment that you say, ah, good enough, I, I, I only need to know what I need to know. And so I do promote uh, people that within their field develop themselves. For example, if you're an art director, okay, you should be interested in photography, in retouching, in layouting, but you shouldn't stop there. You can, you should do, you should start video editing because every mobile phone can shoot film and you can, you can do something. As a copywriter, it's okay if you start sketching your own storyboards because the visuals don't have to be perfect. It's just you make up your mind, what do you want to create and how do you, how do you convey to other people. So it's this thing that uh, don't confine yourself to the thing that your job description is saying and uh, don't, don't ever think this is enough, this is all you need to know to fulfill that job.